RBB Morning Show, the coach, mentor, marketing, and social media strategist you need each and every morning. RBB, a live morning talk show that gives you the ability to get the coach you need, strategist you wish you could afford, social media manager and strategist, marketing strategist, project manager, certified OBM, VA, business startup strategist, profit strategist, web strategist, email funnel strategist, sales page strategist, PR strategist, time management, mindset, and overall business development strategist. We answer it all. With over 25 years of business experience, both in corporate and small business worlds, we really can answer it all. Good morning, everybody. Uh, I hope everybody's having a good start to your Thursday morning. I am sorry, my allergies are so bad and my eyes are goopy and running and so bad. Um, And my brain is not working because I took NyQuil last night. Uh, Today, we're talking about leveling up your sales. So today, we're still talking about messy action and diving in how to really level up your sales. Now, on the heels of two weeks ago when we talked about sales. Yeah, let's just disclaim this. If you don't like what I'm saying, go away, shut us off, mute me, whatever. I don't care. Anybody who sends me nastiness on Facebook, Instagram, texts me, calls me, emails me, anything, you will be reported for bullying. Now, it's not necessary, you guys. Like, there's more than one way to do sales. There's more than one way to do business. There's no, there's no right way, but there there are definitely wrong ways to do it. So, (laughs) there are definitely wrong ways. Um, And I love a good debate. If you want to debate me, please. Have an intelligent, awesome conversation with me. I, you have no idea. I miss debating. I miss living in Africa because I could go and haggle with people in the market for everything. I miss that. So somebody, please, please feel free to do so. I would love that. But the minute I get called a nasty name, goodbye. Um, just not dealing with it. And I will tell you, my patience for any of that this week is even less than it was last week. So, okay, now that we've disclaimed it, the reason you want to level up your sales is because it helped. Like, th- these are ways that you can take messy action because to make money, you have to be able to make sales, right? Well, we're going to give you some tips today on some of some good ways to be able to do this because you, we're going to teach you how to generate leads. Danielle's going to teach you how to pitch, you know, like those sort of things that, and then we're also going to talk about the things not to do because we see a lot of times and we know that it's just women just really attempting to just take action. We're going to talk about the things you shouldn't do. So maybe we should start there and then talk about the other things. No, I, I, okay. So that I, the things that you shouldn't do are really easy. Don't friend request somebody and then send them a message and automatically try to get to know them in a quick paragraph or and, then, and then dive right into pitching them. Or, or you, you skip that part and you just immediately oh, pitch. You don't immediately pitch anybody. Don't message somebody just to pitch to them and tell them the wonderful product. You saw something they mentioned and you think this would help them. Don't ever do that. Don't do that. Period. I, I know a lot of MLMs teach this. And this is why people hate MLMs. A lot of coaches teach this too. It, that is true. This, this is wrong. This is against everything that is good about being able to do an online sale just don't do it and then also don't insult somebody when they turn you down don't like there was i know there was a trend forever you know saying well then you just you know you just don't want to invest in yourself and you just want to stay stuck and blah 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 because people were charging astronomical prices and i think they still are you know don't don't insult people don't back them into a corner. I know one lady that would not quit. Every time I said no, she'd come back with some sort of counter offer that was cheaper or, you know, was a payment plan or was this or was that. She would not take no for an answer. Uh, and don't do that. If you have payment plans and all of that, all of that should be shared up front. Your pricing should be shared up front. All of that. D- d- don't. You yeah, have to don't, don't you back value people. yourself when you do that too. Well, don't back people into a corner because 
because then they feel like they have to say yes. So you will leave them alone and then they end up resenting you and it will cause drama later on down the line when they just get really mad and decide that they want out. Yeah. Don't do it. Just don't. Yeah, just don't. Okay. Um, so those are some things. Not, I'm not going to go through the whole list and what not to do. Those are just some really good things. So I have talked about, and I talked about this in when I did the sales, is a 60-20-20 rule. And I'm going to explain to you how I didn't dive into the nitty gritty of this for specifically for Facebook groups to find and generate leads. We're all in Facebook groups. This is still, even though they're starting to fail, this is still one of the better places to do so. <coughs> Excuse me. So go make, pick four or five groups. Do not be in 900 of them. Don't do what I did when I started. I had so many groups that I was overwhelmed and I don't overwhelm easy and I was still overwhelmed. Pick four or five groups that you know your ideal clients are in and get active in them. So this means ask your own questions. Yes, that will help you generate leads. This means when somebody has something that's in your area of expertise, you jump in and help them just like you would a paying client. Yes, this generates leads. When somebody asks a question and wants to know when somebody can do this, jump in and answer their questions first and say, I also, I do this for my clients and this is what I find works the best. One, that is a veiled sales pitch. It's not outright in your face. Very rarely, I don't care if there's somebody saying, is there a VA that does this? You should not be somebody on there going, me, 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 me. You should always be asking for clarification. You should, there, there is a question to ask out of every post. There is something that you can ask to refine, to look intelligent, to look like you are an expert in your field. Uh, don't, and if somebody says, just DM me, let me tell you, unless you are seeing this post within two minutes of it going up, don't bother. Because that person is already overwhelmed with 900 people going, me, I'm better at this than this person, whatever. It's too much. Now, on that same value, if you are looking for help and if you need help, do not allow people to DM you. Automat you can automatically weed out a whole lot of idiots and bad people by saying, please do not D DM me. And then they DM you. So and they'll, 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 you will still they, get they will DM, it. But that means okay. you could just hit that delete button and get rid of them right off the bat. I actually have a spreadsheet of people who have DM me when I told them not to. Um, and, and I keep track of their names so I know never to hire them. Yes, I do that. Yeah, because they can't follow us simple directions. You don't want to hire somebody who can't follow a simple direction. So, or they just blatantly disregard it. Um, so those are some good tips to know. So the 60-20-20 rule, 60% 20, 20 value. Everything you do in a group, 60% of what you should do should be providing value. That means that out of 100 posts, 60 of them in a group, and there are groups like the Women Helping Women Entrepreneurs. There are more than 100 posts a day. Believe me, way over 100 posts a day. I don't know how those admins keep up with it. I know there's a huge group of them, but still. 60 of your posts should be compute, complete value, never pitching yourself once. Of those 100 posts, 20 of them should be veiled value. So jumping in saying, hey, I know that this works the best for our clients. This is what we do. Uh, if you have any questions, let me know how I can help you. That is veiled value. Because you got a sales pitch in there, believe me. And then 20% can be outright pitching. So 60 of that 100, absolutely no pitching whatsoever. 20 out of that 100, a little kind of hot hidden pitch. And 20 of them can be outright pitching. And even then, provide value. Always provide value. And be active, consistently active. When you are consistently active in those groups, people start to learn your name. People start to see you often. They start to see you as an expert. They start to want to communicate with you. And you start getting consistent leads. Um, 
The other thing that's not going to get you consistent leads, I will guarantee this, is your social media. Don't bother. Your social media is for informing people. It is for providing value. That is the only thing your social media is for. Period. Stop pitching to people in your social media. Now, I don't consider pitching of if you have questions, reach out to Be Boss Girl. Or if you're looking for social, if you're looking for a social media expert, Be Boss Girl's website has it. That that's a more of a veiled because somebody has to take action on it to get to somewhere to do something. The outright, I can do this for you, and I am the best person for this, and I can make you um, six figures in 90 days. That's outright pitching somebody in your social media. Don't do it. Because people start ignoring you very quickly. The days of influencer marketing and influencer type posts are going by the wayside. Like, I have an influencer that I work with. In any post that she doesn't, and she's an influencer in the true meaning. She makes full-time income being an influencer. She is no longer getting interaction on her post. She's getting maybe 20 likes on a post where we used to get two to 3,000 a day. And she has over 300,000 followers on Instagram and 200 on Facebook. And her Twitter is millions. Influencer marketing is definitely going by the wayside. And there's reasons for that. We may talk about it one day. And I've, I've talked about it off and on. I, I've been mentioning things for months now. So keep in mind, you need to be authentic and real and sharing. I have a blueprint that will make you six figures in a month is not authentic and real. Because I will tell you, a blueprint does not work for everybody, period. Stop selling it. That is not going to generate you leads. What's going to generate you leads is, man, I'm having a crap day being an entrepreneur. I've had this disaster and this disaster and so many tech disasters. And you want to know what? When I share things like that, almost always I get somebody interacting. Oh, my God, I've had the same day. Oh, I'm so sorry. I mean, I hate when that happens. And, man, I'm really struggling with X, Y, Z. And 90% of the time, I could jump in and go, oh, man, I have to. But you know, I know what I found that worked for me? I'm not pitching them at all. I'm never pitching in a situation like that, ever. I'm helping. And commiserating with one another helps, believe me. <laughs> Being able to commiserate with somebody else who truly understand what it's like to be, own a business. And you will start seeing posts probably in about February for me of, this is what sucks about being an entrepreneur in Western New York in winter. I haven't left my house in three weeks. I need to get out. I'm going stir crazy. I can't like concentrate. I can't do anything. And I posted, I've done that a few times over the years. And when it I actually work, really does get that way. Yes. I, I, I don't handle going stir crazy very well. Um, I am ADHD. So getting trapped in my house for weeks on end is not a good thing for me. Um, and even in IT, and this is IT people that aren't super social media active, without a fail, somebody would reach out to me and go, oh my God, I feel the same way. I can't wait for the weather to get nicer, or my kids have all been sick for weeks. I haven't left the house or whatever. You always find something common sharing those things. I share the who my ideal client is every once in a while. And, and I say every once in a while, I have a rotation for these things, so I have it scheduled. Um, and who my ideal client is. And without fail, when I describe that woman down to the type of day that she's having and how she's dressed today or all of that, I always get interaction off of those things. And I share that kind of thing in a group. Who else, who else can, who else, who else is going through this today? And you get interaction from that and you get leads from things like that. Now, that being said, LinkedIn is never a place I share anything like that. LinkedIn is for value only and business-based value only. Your emotions don't belong there. Period. I don't care. Uh, something else that I want everybody to really think about. Um, unless you're a political activist, stop sharing political stuff uh, so that it is seen in your Facebook feed. And if it's, you have any client stuff or are looking for lead generation. Um, right now, politics... I'm old enough that I've been through this election cycle way more times than I want to admit to. Um, this is the, 
I can't think of a better word because this is really true. The most hateful political environment I have ever seen. Yeah, it's um, gross. Really gross right now. And, and I'm really guiding people to not share those things. I have my own personal beliefs. And if you want to message me, I'm happy to share them with you. But you have to message me per personally. I will not be sharing them live, online, anywhere. Because one, it's nobody else's business. And two, when it comes to political stuff, I have three things that I classify it as. And how's it going to help my business? How's it going to hurt my business? And how's it going to help me financially? Those are what I base everything on now. Um, because I don't trust nobody. Yeah, you have to be very that? careful what you say now. Because if you say anything that offends someone in some way, which is very easy to do these days, um, smear campaigns begin. They'll start, like the, the, the people try and for whatever reason, and I don't understand this, like I don't, they try and take you down just because they disagree with you. So be very careful when it comes to that because that could hurt your lead generation. Uh, very much so can hurt your lead generation. So especially in Facebook groups, do not get in those conversations. It's just a really, really bad idea right now. Um, and then not only that, but Facebook has made it, um, they've all but said that they're doing this, but they're actually like filtering and picking and choosing the political content that is available to people. So don't be sharing it yourself. Um, if you are a, an entrepreneur <coughs> and unless political stuff is the center of what your business is, you are hurting your chances of getting leads right now. Um, and I've had this conversation with about, I think there were 30 or 40 of us in a Facebook group, uh, like a higher level Facebook group the other day that were talking about this and how we all have to be very, very careful in this political environment because it is, it's very hateful and, and, and dividing. I, I just, I, I, I don't understand, understand why it's it's so I don't, so I don't care more than before, because honestly, the issues aren't a whole lot different than they ever No, have. and people are allowed to have differing opinions. That's what makes the world go round. But just you guys, basically all we're saying is just be smart. And one of the best ways to be smart, especially when it comes to business and making money is to remain neutral. Very much so. Um, I don't share, I don't often share my religious opinions on Facebook or any of that, and Facebook is not a personal thing for me. I mean, while I have some personal stuff you'll see for me, Facebook years ago became a very business-based thing for me, and I just don't use it for personal stuff. Personal stuff happens in text messaging and other places. It doesn't happen on Facebook anymore because it's, it's just not, I want my business to be seen as professional, and therefore all my personal posts are 90% of the time professional. Um, once in a while, you'll see something from me that's not, but even that is carefully thought out, I will tell you. So be very careful because that does help in, or hurt your lead generation. Um, mm -hmm. And it's something that really, unfortunately, has to be thought of when you're doing that. When you're pitching, when you do go to private messaging and to messenger for your pitching, your pitch should not be in the first little bit. Say hi. Ask them how their day is. What type of conversation would you have with somebody at a coffee shop you're meeting for the first time? You wouldn't walk up to them and say, hi, I sell social media. What do you want to buy? That's just not how it works. The same goes for when you're in Messenger. If you're in Messenger, you're sitting down to have a cup of coffee with that person. Have that same type of conversation, please. Because I How long should you wait before you pitch? Because I know Danielle will talk to people for days mm -hmm. before she pitches. Um, I tend to wait. We, I have a lot of back and forth conversations. The hi, how are you? I want to know. And I ask people this almost every time. I want to know three things about you. I want to know one thing about your business, one thing about your family. And I want to know something weird about you. I want to break the ice. I want to get to know that person. And I will tell you right now, I'm talking to somebody that I've been talking to for two weeks and we're just going through the commiserating about being entrepreneurs and being moms and trying to clean our house and make dinner and get a shower every day and all of that. And we've both talked about what we do and where we struggle in our business. I'm very open about that. Where I struggle, I have struggles. Even though I've been doing this 25 years, I still have struggles, people. Every day, 
Um, there are things I don't understand and things I have to relearn how to do all the time. I mean, we all have those. Have a real conversation and make a connection with somebody. And a person that pitches me immediately, I'll say, thank you. I'm not interested. I hate when people are spammy in sales. Delete. Or I will automatically pitch them. And well, it seems that you really need lessons on how to do some selling. I'm happy to teach you. This is my rate. And then I always block them. So let me tell you, I don't generally ever want to work with that person. So I just, that's, it's spammy. Don't spam people. Now, if somebody asked me to slide into private messaging from a Facebook post, my first thing is, is I always copy that Facebook post so that I put that in the private message. Because I don't know what all of you are like, but I get hundreds of private messages a day that are all business-based. I can't keep track of who's who. Believe me, I have no idea who's who. I have to go back and read through the conversation every time. So I copy and paste that. And my first thing is, hi, thank you for asking me to message you. I'm going to copy and paste the original Facebook post so I don't lose track of what this conversation is about. I get hundreds of messages a day and I just want to make sure that I'm taking care of you properly. And that pops in there. Then I jump back in and say, hey, tell me a little bit more about how I can help you. And I let them and I will tell you, I usually get a whole paragraph of where they're struggling with and and then I acknowledge that. Always acknowledge the issues that somebody's having or what they're struggling with. Don't just say, oh, I can help you. I can fix that for you. You're not there to automatically fix. You're there to help. And always provide value even in those conversations. That is how you pitch. And that is how you gain clients. And yes, it works, people, because uh, I wouldn't be sitting here. I would be out in the corporate world still working, working for somebody else. So yes, it works. Or Gina and I wouldn't be sitting here talking to you every day. Just to be clear. So I hope you guys have gotten a lot out of how to take messy action and take the action to find, generate sales, generate leads. And leads are not automatically sales. Just because you have a lead doesn't mean you automatically have a new client. Stop telling people that you got a new client on Facebook because somebody's talking to you. Please stop that. I don't know how many people I've talked to about that. Until they sign a paperwork and pay you, they aren't a client. Just getting that out there. <laughs> I want you to remember today. Today is Thursday, September 26th. It's the last Thursday in September. Where did September go? Ah! Um, I want you to have an amazing Thursday. Remember to rise, become, and be everything you can in your business. And taking messy action is absolutely part of that. So remember to take some messy action. If you want to debate with me over anything, please, please, please do. I want, I've, nobody's had a good, I haven't had a good debate in a while. So I'm looking for one. Come on over and have one with me. Uh, have a great day, everybody. Bye-bye. RBB Morning Show, the coach, mentor, marketing, and social media strategist you need each and every morning.